I grew up on a farm, you know, a tiny country town. Conserving water was very, very important. I came to Melbourne to study design and I've always been interested in that avenue. I want to practice what I preach to. So I live at Nightingale One in Brunswick. It's a great building with a green facade. There's a coffee shop downstairs. It's really good. I go there every day. I live here in this apartment with my partner Adam and our little boy Seb. He's 17 weeks, so he's still pretty new. I was really interested in living in a place like this because obviously it's like amazingly well designed and then it's really sustainable too. The architects have thought so much about the materials that go into this building because they need to be either recycled or low VOC. The floor, for instance, is recycled Australian hardwood. We have concrete bench tops. We've got black foam ply joints which has no additives. Also you can see there's no ceiling so it's kind of like a reductive design strategy so the apartment appears bigger and loftier but you also see how the building works. I asked my partner last night actually what he liked the most about the apartment and he said the heater. So we've got hydronic heating and they're old cast iron heaters which have been recycled from an old factory building in Collingwood in Melbourne. Question that I get asked when I say that I live in the Nightingale is about the shared laundry. People can't really wrap their head around it, but it's actually quite amazing and it is really something that creates a community. You run into your neighbours and have little chats and fight over the washing lines. The main struggles living in a big city is like housing affordability. The Nightingale model are really committed to lowering the cost of living. So there's great initiatives and great partnerships. For instance, in this apartment building, we've got the rooftop solar, hydronic heating, the shared internet speed, and people like Momentum Energy with a great partnership with Nightingale One, which provides 100% renewable energy to every single apartment. The whole building is green renewable power from wind farms in Tassie too so even better. I think one of the great things about the Nightingale model is too they're always located close to multiple avenues of public transport. We have shared bike parking on the ground floor. We've got a bike path right beside our house so we can just jump on the bike path. We can ride all the way into the city. I ride to work. I ride to the pub. I'm actually a pretty crazy obsessed cyclist. One of those people that wears lycra on the weekends. I really hope my son likes bike riding. <laughs> So we've got these really big double glazed doors. It's almost like the whole facade opens up and it's like an extension of your lounge room. During the summertime, it's like lovely and green with all these vines growing up all the walls and across the roof. During the winter though, all of the leaves fall off the outside vines and so then the facade's kind of stripped bare and it lets the afternoon light in to kind of warm up the house as well. So I really like the fact that there's three of us living in a 50 square metre apartment, which I know happens all over the world, but it's not that common in Australia. It's quite a small compact building in terms of like a multi-residential project, but there's a big like rooftop garden. So we've got all this green space up on the roof. So there's lots of nice like planting and seats. Um, you can lay on the grass over here. There's also um, communal um, induction barbecue and then a big table here where you can come and meet people and you know, dinners or birthday parties or whatnot. And there's also a couple of little sand pits here for the kids to play in. And of course it has like incredible views across Brunswick and Melbourne and then out to the Dandenongs. Also out um, this way. <laughs> I don't even know what those mountains are there. <laughs> I think architecture needs to look at nature and what's happening in the world because of things like climate change now. We're facing a huge emergency where we're having record temperatures, bushfires, and we're having once in a hundred year floods like every single year. We really have a big responsibility to design better quality buildings that are coping with these things. And people like Momentum Energy can really help with that in providing us with 100% green power.